let's sketch the graph of this rational function right here. So again, we need the following um, information. We need the x and y um, uh, intercepts. Okay, intercepts. Uh, we also need the horizontal asymptote and the vertical asymptote. We might be needing some additional points. And then afterwards, we're going to find the domain and range. Right? So let me put my information here, and then this is where I solve for, for them, okay? So let's start with the x-intercept. Again, uh, to find the x-intercept, you equate y equals 0, okay? So in this case, set this equal to 0, so 9 um, over x squared minus 9 equals 0. Uh, multiply both sides by x squared minus 9, you will get... Okay, let me do that. So x squared minus 9 times x squared minus 9, you will get 9 equals 0, which is wrong, right? So that only means that there is no x-intercept. So that means there's no part of the graph that will hit or intersect the x-axis, okay? So, let me erase that. Let's write, so x-intercept is NA, right? Not available, okay? How about the y-intercept? So for the y-intercept, we um, will equate x equals 0, right? So we'll have f of 0 equals 9 over 0 squared minus 9 that will give us what? that will give us 9 divided by negative 9 that will give us negative 1 okay and so your y intercept so your y intercept is the point what the point 0 negative 1 okay so that's your y intercept the next thing that we want to know is the horizontal asymptote okay so again, for the horizontal asymptote, what we need to be looking at are the leading terms of our numerator and denominator. So for our numerator, our leading term is 9. For the denominator, our leading term is x squared, okay? So we'll be looking at, we'll be looking at 9 over x squared, okay? Then we, if we can simplify, we simplify. If we can't, then that's it. So in this case, we cannot simplify this further. So let's ask the question. What will happen to this expression when x goes to infinity? Okay, so if if you make x bigger and bigger and bigger as as it approaches infinity, what will happen to this entire expression? It becomes zero, right? So that's our horizontal asymptote. Our horizontal asymptote um, is y equals zero. Because that's what will happen when x goes to infinity, okay? So as you make x bigger and bigger and bigger, this expre expression goes closer and closer to zero, okay? So that's your horizontal asymptote. y equals zero. Now how about your vertical asymptote? Now again, for the vertical asymptote, all you need to do is just equate the denominator to zero. So you have x squared minus 9 equals 0. This is equal to x plus 3 times x minus 3 equals 0. You have two solutions here. You have x equals negative 3 and x equals positive 3. Okay. So you have two vertical asymptotes here. Okay. So for the vertical asymptote, you have two values. x equals minus 3 and x equals positive 3. All right, let's try to sketch the graph. Let's see if we need some additional points. Okay, uh, let's... All right, so for our x-intercept, we don't have one. For our y-intercept, we have 0, negative 1. So 0, negative 1 is here, right? Our horizontal asymptote is y equals to 0. So that's here. So let me, let me just... So that's our horizontal asymptote right there. So 
let's assume that goes to infinity. So that's our horizontal asymptote. Our vertical. Okay, let me. Okay. So it's clear. All right. So our vertical asymptote. Um, our x equals negative three, which is here. And x equals positive 3, which is here. Okay. So, yeah, using this information, we really need some additional points. We don't know where to graph here. We, well, we don't know where to graph. We know that we're going to graph at this portion, but we don't know what that looks like. We don't know where to graph here, so we will be needing some additional points. All right, let's start at the left. Let's say um, this point right here that's negative 4. Okay, so let's say that our x is negative 4. So that will give us 9 over negative 4 squared minus 9. That's 9 divided by 16 minus 9. 9 divided by 9 divided by um, 7. That's about 1. 1.1. 1 .1, so that's so that's oh, that's about here okay still need uh, additional point uh, let's see uh, how about when um, x is somewhere so when x is somewhere here that's negative 8 let's try negative 8 so that's 9 over negative 8 squared minus 9 that will give us 9 divided by 64 minus 9 that's that's a small number that's close to zero so i assume that's somewhere here so we can just you know we can just connect the dots and say that the graph looks like this okay so the graph looks like that okay so how about here we'll be needing um we'll be needing two points let's try Let's try x equals negative 2. So we know where that point is. So let's try x equals negative 2. So, so that's 9 divided by negative 2 squared minus 9. That's 9 over 4 minus 9 is negative 5. So that's 9 over negative 5. That's about negative 2. So we can approximate the location. That's about negative 2 negative 2 negative 2 that's about here okay and so since this is symmetric we can just assume that the um, little point is there and then we can just connect the dots you know how this looks like okay this looks like this okay and like that and then, um, since we know that rational functions give you symmetric graphs, so we can just say uh, that the other point is here. We can just mirror. We can mirror this graph over here, okay? And then the other one would be, oops, sorry. That would be here. And then we can just connect dots. And that's it. So that's how our graph looks like okay now it's time to find the domain and range okay so the domain would be okay so if you look at the x-axis you'll see that this graph will stretch over to infinity so our domain would start at negative infinity but it will end right at this boundary here so where's that that's negative 3 okay so up to negative 3 open because you do not include negative three union three oops sorry negative three up to okay so you can see that we have x values here up to here so that's negative three up to positive three right you basically have these x values so that's going to be in three to positive three and then union again from positive three to infinity okay so from positive 3 to infinity open that's your domain your range will be your range will be so again if you look at the graph in the y-axis 
you get this graph to go to infinity and then um, this graph also goes to infinity but your y so if you if you look at this graph your y started at zero right because you have uh, you know that would that would go close to zero right so your y would start at zero zero to infinity and then over at the bottom that's going to be union close one or negative one I'm sorry because you're going to include one that's part of the graph right so negative one up to negative infinity so that's your range